Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Saturday. My name is Nick Morrow with Occupy Fantasy. You could find me on Twitter at Nick Morrow DFS. As always, I'm here to help you break down tonight's NBA DFS main slates on both DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, video is getting out a little bit later today. I just recorded this whole thing and then the uh, screen sharing dropped out halfway through. So had to run it back. So sorry that this is getting out a little bit later than I'd like it to. Um, if you haven't already, please like the video. Also subscribe to the channel. That helps us get more free content like this out to you on a regular basis. Also, so check the links in the description below. If you're not already a member of Occupy Fantasy, you should join today. You get access to the model you see here, which I'll be using throughout the video. We have a single lineup builder, a multi lineup builder, a private Discord server full of DFS pros to help you improve your game. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Just a five game slate tonight should be pretty easy to go through team by team, game by game. Um, I got a couple windows open here. One for FanDuel, one for DraftKings. Going to slowly kind of build as we talk through them. I'm maxing out plays now. Like I said, I just recorded this whole video. We're going to run it back, though, and hopefully this time we have no technical difficulties. Uh, quickly going to refresh the model here. And yeah, I'm going to go in the order of the official in NBA injury report that came out at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we have a few team on, teams on back-to-back, -back, so we're going to kind of have to wait and see on a few of these spots. But we have most of the news we need, so we can go ahead and get this slate started. All right, so first game on the slate, we have the Pistons at the Cavs. The Cavs are 15.5-point favorites at home, just a 218-point total here. Um, let's start on the Cleveland side of things. No major injury news. The only injuries they have are to G League players, so nothing we really need to do dig too deep on. Um, Evan Mobley looks great on both sites. A um, little bit too cheap at 7,600. I like him here. Jared Allen, too cheap over on DraftKings at 6,900. Uh, both Mitchell and Garland are fine as tournament options. I'm not really going to prioritize either of them, though. Uh, again, very widespread, very low total. Not the best game environment for DFS. Uh, but as things stand, we're kind of lacking quality power forward options. I could see playing Mobley on both sites. I'll go ahead and pencil him in. I think he's the one Cav I'm really honing in on as things stand. But again, Allen, Garland, Mitchell, all look fine on both sides. Um, all four of those starters look good here. On the injury report, there's no one now. It wouldn't shock me to see maybe them rest Mitchell or Garland here. If that is the case, the other guy who's left on the floor is going to become excellent. Uh, that would also slide someone like Karis LeVert into the starting lineup. So keep an eye on that. But like I said, no injury news as things stand right now. Just a team kind of price where they should be other than maybe Mobley. Uh, so no priorities, even though it is a nice little matchup here against Detroit. Um, over on the Detroit side of things, they have a bunch of injuries. Uh, Bojan Bogdanovic is out. Alec Burks is out. Jalen Duran is out. Isaiah Stewart is out. So... First and foremost, I think we could go back to James Wiseman over on DK at just 4,900. Um, you can play two centers over there, which makes it even easier to get to someone like Wiseman. Um, I also like that Wiseman's likely to play even if this game were to blow out. Um, yeah, I mean, they want to see what they have with this kid. They went ahead and got him at the trade deadline. They want to start him moving forward, and both the other centers are out tonight. So lots of reason to like Wiseman here. Definitely better on DK where you could play two centers, and he is over 1K cheaper than he is on FanDuel. So I'll call him a priority over there. We're seeing a ton of ownership going to Hamadou Diallo. I don't mind him as a value option. I'd prefer to see him in the starting lineup. I think with Bojan and... Um, who else? Obviously, Kate Cunningham, but also Alex Bur Alec Burks out of the lineup. Um, that's going to secure minutes and upside for someone like Diallo. I like him better on DK where he's only 4,500. Uh, we could go ahead and pencil him in over there as well. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to rush to him on FanDuel at that $5,500 tag. Um, Jaden Ivey, high ceiling, low floor. Killian Hayes, similar story. They're both kind of priced about where they should be, but I like both of them in tournaments here as well. Uh, that's really it. I mean... Magruder's so cheap, maybe you could justify it. He's just not a great fantasy producer. Marvin Bagley, he's had some decent games, but if he's not starting, I probably wouldn't get to him. So really, the priority here is James Wiseman over on DraftKings. Um, and then I don't mind Ivy Hayes. They're fine. Diallo, much better if he starts, but he's probably a little bit over-owned coming off the bench. So I do like him here. It's not a great matchup. Um... But yeah, I guess he's kind of a borderline core play as things stand. So not the best game to open things up. We can move into the 8 o'clock window now. We have the Hawks at the Heat. The Heat are two and a half point favorites at home. 225 point game total here. So this one's kind of tricky to talk about. Both these teams are on back-to-backs. Uh, wouldn't shock me to see Butler ruled out. As things stand, we have no news yet on these Miami Heat. If Butler's out, Hero and Bam both become excellent options. Uh, so keep an eye on that. If all three are in, I do 
not mind the prices on Butler or Bam. They look fine on both sides. Hero, okay as well. Just more scoring dependent, wider range of outcomes. So he's going to be riskier than the other two. Uh, but still likely no Kyle Lowry. As long as he's out, you could consider Gabe Vincent as a value point guard. He just hasn't been great in terms of DFS production lately. So I probably wouldn't get to him much. Uh, Caleb Martin now healthy and back in the lineup too. He should be fine here. Uh, not something I'd really be rushing to get to though. Uh, just very inconsistent. Wide range of outcomes. A lot of mouths to feed in this Miami starting lineup. So as things stand, if these guys are all healthy, I wouldn't call anything a priority. I think the prices on Butler and Bam are good enough to even play if they're in the lineup with Hero. Um, if Butler's out, Hero and Bam become major priorities. But as things stand, it's really tough to call anything a core play on the Miami Heat unless we get news that someone's ruled out. Uh, similar situation over on Atlanta. Uh, they're on a back-to-back -back as well. Trey Young, DeJounte Murray both look fine here. The price on Murray on DK is very, very appealing to me. He is only 7800 over there. So that's just simply too cheap. Uh, obviously, Trey Young, the higher ceiling, the better fantasy producer, but you're getting almost a 2K discount on him on DraftKings. You see only a 1K difference on FanDuel, so I do prefer Trey Young over there, but that price on Murray is just wrong, in my opinion, on DraftKings. Uh, Clint Capella has been seeing more minutes with Quinn Snyder in as the head coach. I don't mind him as a center play. Kind of a secondary option for me, though. Wouldn't really call him a core play. Uh, but yeah, Young Murray look good on both sides. Capella looks really good on DraftKings. But another situation where we're going to have to kind of wait and see. Uh, team on a back-to-back, -back, we do not yet have that injury report even in the middle of the day. So uh, wait and see on that one. We'll move into the next game on the slate now. We have the Houston Rockets at the San Antonio Spurs. Spurs are one-point favorites at home. We're looking at a 230-and-a-half-point game total here. Yeah, so Houston... <laughs> Deshaun Tate is out. That's really the only piece of injury news we need to keep an eye on. Um, not that we need to keep an eye on it. He's already ruled out. So uh, not going to open up too much for Houston, except for maybe Tari Eason, who looks excellent, especially over on DK. If he starts, I won't mind that 5,900 price on FanDuel. Coming off the bench, though, that's probably a little bit inflated uh, for my taste. But regardless, on DK, where he's only 4,300, I think he's a really strong option over there. Um, so I'd go ahead and pencil Eason in. Uh, Jalen Green looks fine here, but KPJ is back in the lineup, so I'm not rushing to get to him. Jabari Smith with Tate out should see a little bit of a boost. His minutes should be a little bit more secure. Uh, but again, just a tough player to trust. Wide range of outcomes. Upper and Sangoon, very talented, great fantasy producer. Uh, the issue with him is the minutes just haven't been there consistently. So while I do like him... Uh, as a player, I like his upside. It's just tough to trust. Uh, the minutes just haven't been there consistently for him, mostly because he can't defend the pick and roll, also because the Rockets are probably tanking, and he's one of the best players on the floor. So the priorities here are Eason, more so on DK. Don't mind Jalen Green, Jabari Smith. Even KJ Martin is okay as a tournament option. Uh, like Sengun, but he's tough to trust. Would only play him in large field stuff, so... Uh, another situation where it's a good game environment, but this team is healthy. They're all kind of priced where they should be, so it's tough to trust anyone enough to call them a core play, again, other than Eason over on DraftKings. Uh, Spurs, tons of injury news for these guys. we got Devin Vassell out, Roby out, McDermott out, Langford questionable, Kelvin Johnson doubtful. Malachi Branham is questionable, and Cam Birch is out. So Trey Jones only played 20 minutes last time out. If we get word that he's not going to be limited here, I would load up on Trey Jones. Um, I think it's a little bit safer right now to go to someone like Devontae Graham. I'll go ahead and pencil him in over on FanDuel. We've built a lot over on DraftKings so far, but we don't really have the FanDuel plays in yet. So I'll put Graham in. While we're here, I'll go ahead and pencil in Jeremy Sochan as well, even at 6,100 with Kelvin Johnson out of the lineup. He should see enough usage uh, to justify that price tag. So I like So Chan. Um, in the front court, I could see getting to maybe Zach Collins, especially on Fandor where he's power forward eligible. Uh, not the best price, but he has been over 30 points per game in terms of fantasy points consistently. Uh, that's good enough for me to want to get to him. I don't mind him here. Uh, what else? I mean, if Brandon's out, that should open minutes for someone like Bates Giop, but wait and see and make sure he's in the starting lineup before we go to him. He is drawing some decent ownership. I think people are assuming he does start tonight, uh, but again, another situation we have to keep an eye on. Over on DK, I mean, similar uh, situation. We got Graham at a really nice 4,500 price tag. I like him over there. Jeremy Sochan at 5,400. Uh, so yeah, I'll go ahead and pencil in both. I mean, we pretty much built a whole lineup here already so maybe i pull some of these guys out like i said earlier if diallo's not starting i think he's over owned so maybe that's the first guy i pull off the board here uh but yeah really easy to build on dk if you're kind of living in that mid-range uh, but there are a few payups on the slate i like we'll talk about them in a moment uh but yeah another team i mean 
the Spurs are banged up, but it's tough to trust these guys, especially with Popovich kind of uh, limiting minutes on some of these players. If Trey Jones gets full run, I'd prefer him over Devontae Graham. It's just tough to trust that right now. For now, I think Graham's a safer play, but the field is echoing that in their ownership. So maybe play Graham and Cash, Jones in tournaments, something like that. Um, again, Jeremy Sochan looks great here with Kelvin Johnson out. Don't mind Zach Collins. Bates Giop looks good, but make sure he's in that starting lineup. All right, moving into the next game on the slate now, we have the Milwaukee Bucks hosting the Philadelphia 76ers. The Bucks, five point favorites at home, 232 point game total here. So, yeah, the Bucks are as healthy as they've been all season. Uh, the only injury they have listed, <clears throat> excuse me, right now is Wesley Matthews. Uh, so yeah, it's tough to prioritize anything. If Middleton starts, I think he's okay. I'm going to take a quick look at the minutes on him. Uh, he was limited going into the all-star break. They've said they're going to start ramping him up. Let me just check if that's true. Where are you, Chris? Where is he? There we go. Shooting guard only on FanDuel now. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, still not getting over 30 minutes. So he's okay as a tournament play. Not something I'd be rushing to. Uh, the one play I really like here, no surprise, is Giannis on Um We're going to talk about him compared to Embiid. It's going to be tough to fit both of them in, uh, in your lineups here. Embiid is 1K cheaper than Giannis is on DraftKings. So I prefer Embiid over there, but they're only $100 apart on FanDuel, so I prefer Giannis on FanDuel as things stand. Uh, Drew feels a little bit overpriced. Don't mind Brook Lopez. Um, he's had some big games against Giannis, in, or excuse me, against Embiid in the past. Uh, he likes to shoot the three. Embiid doesn't like defending on the perimeter very much, so Lopez does have some upside here. Um, he's probably my second favorite buck play, uh, but really it's only Giannis that I'm interested in for Milwaukee, one of the best plays on the slate wherever you can afford him. Over on the Philly side of things, Embiid obviously looks excellent. Like I mentioned, he's 1K cheaper than Giannis on DraftKings, so I'm going to get to Embiid as my favorite payup over there. James Harden looks good on both sides, sub 10K. Uh, Tyrese Maxey feels too cheap at 5,400. But yeah, I mean, the priorities here are Embiid and Harden if you could fit them. Uh, Maxey fine as a secondary play. Harris, Melton, I can see getting to if you're playing a bunch of lineups in some large field tournament stuff, but... Um, yeah, just another pretty healthy team. It's tough to really call anything a priority. Uh, Dwayne Dedman's the only player uh, questionable on the injury report that's regular, regularly with the 76ers. Other than that, it's just a bunch of G League guys. Uh, so nothing we could really prioritize there. But a great game environment and a very competitive game. So I wouldn't mind getting some pieces here. It's just tough to trust anything other than the studs, that being Embiid, Harden, and uh, Giannis, I'd say probably my third favorite sixer after Harden and Embiid is Maxi, but he's much better over on DraftKings. All right. Um, excuse me, I'm running out of breath because I'm just doing these videos back to back. This is the second time I'm running through this. Uh, we got the Timberwolves at the Kings as the last game on the slate. This game doesn't lock till 10 o'clock. Both teams on back-to-back, -back, so we don't have the injury news yet. Um, we're going to kind of have to wait and see here. As things stand, I'm going to assume that the Kings are going to play everyone. They're fully healthy. Fox and Bonus look good. Definitely prefer Sabonis at the two. Um, Fox's prices come up a bunch. Uh, he's over 9K now, so we're not getting the discount that we were on him compared to some other guards earlier in the season. So Sabonis is fine. I like him a lot here. Keegan Murray, fine on DK where he's only 4,500. 6,300 on FanDuel is tough to stomach, but 4,500 feels too cheap on DraftKings. So uh, Malik Monk, Kevin Herter, fine as large field tournament plays, high ceilings as scoring dependent guards, but also very low floors. Harrison Barnes is cheap enough on DraftKings to consider as a last man in, but not a play I would ever call a priority. Uh, but yeah, team on a back-to-back. -back, we got to kind of wait and see here. If they rest Fox, maybe we get some more minutes for Monk or Ter Terrence Davis. Davion Mitchell would slide in the starting lineup in that situation, but if he's going to be chalky, not a player I'm ever rushing to get to. That would also be a big boost for Sabonis, who's played pretty much every back-to-back -back this season, so I don't imagine Sabonis sits. If Sabonis were to be out, uh, that would be a big boost. Maybe like Matu, if he were to slide in the starting lineup. Trey Lyles, if he were to slide in the starting lineup. But really, I expect the Kings to play everyone tonight. I don't expect we see anyone resting on this back-to-back. -back. Um, so as things stand, no real priorities here. I do like Murray on BK. Sabonis is fine on both sides. Fox a little bit overpriced, but you're getting nice upside at reasonable ownership. All right, on the Minnesota side of things, another team on a back-to-back. -back. We do not have their injury news. I'm going to go ahead and pencil in Anthony Edwards on FanDuel. I like him over there. He's pretty easy to fit with Giannis. We still have him around 4,500 per player. Um, I'd probably pull Zach Collins. You could probably find better value at that power forward spot than we're left with around 5K per player. Um, 
On ZK, you can fit Edwards with Embiid, but you'd probably have to pull DeJounte Murray and or Evan Mobley to make that work. It's tough to fit the two 7K players with a 9K player and Embiid, who's over 11K. Uh, but I do really like Anthony Edwards here. Obviously, D'Angelo Russell was traded away. He's seeing extra usage now. Uh, Mike Conley taking up much less usage than Russell was, which has been a benefit to Edwards. And his price really hasn't moved much. 8900 on FanDuel is just too cheap. Love him, love him over there. And then the 9400 tag on DK, if you can afford him, he looks solid there as well. Kyle Anderson looks good on both sides. 6K on FanDuel, 5600 on DK. Never the most exciting play, but he does fill a void at a thin forward position. Um, and he's been pretty consistent. Don't mind Jaden McDaniels. Torrey Prince actually had a nice game last night. If we see him start, I don't mind him as a value play, uh, but I definitely trust Anderson and McDaniels more. Rudy Gold Bear should be in here on the back-to-back. Whenever he's out, though, Nas Reed becomes one of the best plays on the slate, so just keep an eye on that. Not going to get to Mike Conley very much here. Wouldn't be shocked if he rested on the back-to-back. I think it's more likely we see him play, though. So just keep an eye on that. If he's out and Jalen Noel's out, who was listed as questionable, and I think ruled out late yesterday, maybe Jordan McLaughlin gets a start. But another situation, we got a team on a back-to-back. We're going to just kind of have to wait and see. But as things stand, Love, Anderson, and Edwards on both sides. Gobert looks solid, and if Gobert's out, we have to get to Nas Reed. So just keep that in mind. All right. Um, so let's see. Hopefully the video is still plugging along. Yeah, we look good. I think we made it. Uh, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Again, please like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Just take a quick look at ownership. Diallo, Eason, Graham, Mobley, MB. No surprises there um, over on DK. Jalen Green's a little bit more popular than I think he should be. I do like James Harden. I'd probably rather get to Anthony Edwards, though. Um I just think there's less uh, sharing he has to do than Arden does with him be there, but obviously two excellent plays. Over on FanDuel, Diallo, very popular there as well. Like I said before, I'd prefer him to be in the starting lineup. As things stand, I do prefer Devontae Graham over Trey Jones, but if we get word that Jones won't be limited, um, I'd be comfortable making that pivot. Jones has been the better fantasy producer for most of the season. Um, and Graham's good, but he's just a little bit tougher to trust, a little bit more scoring dependent. Jones gets more assists and rebounds. Um, and then base job, if he starts, he's fine. Uh, but yeah, keeping on that Miami situation, wouldn't be shocked if Butler sat, in which case Bam and Hero would become priorities. Once again, my name is Nick Morrow with Occupy Fantasy. Let's have some fun tonight, everyone, and make some money.